Dr. Daniel Dan was re-elected this time for a third term as president of the country's soccer governing body, the South African Football Association. Talking to the media, Yordan said the focus for the third term will be on strengthening technical capacity within the organization so as to improve the level of the national teams. The 70-year-old Yordan will be leading Sava for the third time as he, well, he was first elected to the presidency in 2013 and won the second term in 2018. Joining us now to unpack the proceedings, which began last week Friday, he broke the news to us on Friday, Velum Yandu, SABC Sports Senior Reporter. Veza, welcome to the program. It's always a pleasure having you on SABC News Channel. It has been, whew, what can I say, a whirlwind couple of days for all football journals, and it culminated in what we had the conversation Friday, what was expected to happen. Then you're done another term. Well, thank you, Jobe, and um, good evening to the viewers as well. Look, um, I think it, it, it was um, kind of expected, uh, judging by how things have been going uh, in the last few weeks. Um, when you look at also the numbers in terms of the regions, um, in terms of um, what he's got on, 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 on his side. And, and, and I think when you look at the numbers, 186 to 27 and uh, to only eight votes um, to the other uh, candidates, um, I, I think it kind of uh, gives the picture um, in terms of uh, his popularity uh, to get this third term inside the organization. Um, as we asked yesterday, outside the organization, it's a different case mm. uh, altogether. But uh, the people who matter in this case, I guess, um, were those um, who are voting and who are the SAFA members. Um, that is uh, the regions and also uh, the associate members. Mm. So, so yeah, um, that's the third term. I remember, he came in in 2013. Yeah. Uh, and then now he's been there for eight years. And then now he, it means that he'll be out in 2026. Yeah. I think the question then for possibly our viewers and maybe myself, we know the problems within SAFA. We see them day in and day out. We know that our junior or development teams have, well, some of them haven't played in years. I can't remember the last time I was invited to an under-23 football uh, training session or preparation for a match. We know we run stories here. A short while ago, you ran a story in my previous bulletin of stadia outside in provinces who are now white elephants. Every single day, we run these stories. And football, as you're saying, somehow internally there is support for this leadership but on the ground where it matters we asking ourselves the question how so how is it happening why does it continue i think in um, in all fairness um during his reign um, i think the most successful um part you can look at um is the performance of the the junior national teams before he came into the picture the junior national teams were really not uh, performing well mm. Um, but if you look at the under-23s, uh, they've been to two Olympics in 2016 and um, also um, last year um, in um, the Tokyo 2020. And then if you look at the under-20s, uh, I think they've been to two uh, World Cups in 2017 in South Korea and also uh, in 2019 in, uh, in, in, in Poland. And they were also in, um, in 20. Uh, uh, 15, the under-17 were at, at the World Cup, and also you've had Banyana um, going to the World Cup for the first time. Yeah. But I think that the main challenge, the main challenge um, has been the performance uh, of Bafana Bafana, because if, Jobe, you have, uh, as I've counted, junior national teams that are regularly uh, making it uh, to these cup competitions, uh, and then why is that success not filtering through yeah. uh, to Bafana Bafana? Yeah. Uh, which then goes back to maybe one of the things that you are saying, and it's something that I have been talking to about uh, um, with the junior national team coaches, um, who've been saying that maybe qualifying to these tournaments, uh, the Olympics and the Under-20 and Under-17 World Cups, has not been something that is through a design, it has been accidental. It yeah. has not been uh, properly planned. Yeah. And this is uh, what uh, the coach Hugo Bruce was alluding to um, recently, to say that, um, just recently in December, he wanted to sit down with the uh, financial team coaches and he was told that uh, they, <laughs> they don't have them on paper <laughs> at the time and there were no camps uh, that were planned. So it means that as much as, yes, we've qualified to the junior uh, international competitions, but that needs to be a proper plan. And I think uh, they are finally acknowledging that, uh, um, especially uh, with what you opened with when they said they acknowledged themselves that um, as SAFA, um, they realize that the technical expertise or the technical vision and technical leadership 
uh, within yeah. uh, is not adequate uh, enough for a leading uh, footballing country uh, on the continent. And, and, and I think for me, uh, what captures the whole thing is that yeah. the fact that they've not had a permanent technical director uh, in two years. I think it, since, it, Neil it, Tovey, it shows, since Neil Tovey left, I think. Yes, since Neil Tovey left. It's been two years now. In fact, uh, by the end of uh, this coming week, uh, it will be approximately two years uh, since Neil Tovey left. And, and, and I think it clearly shows for me that uh, if we can go this long um, without a permanent technical director, uh, it shows that we have not been serious yeah. uh, in that space. And one of the bigger stories, um, and, and it's something that we've been reporting about, uh, you see that uh, in South Africa, there's, um, th there has not been uh, coaching courses for KEF B and KEF A licenses for the past five years, you know? And, 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 and that is starting to impact on some teams now, mm. especially teams that are qualifying to KEF interclub competitions because their coaches are, are not, not qualified. licensed. Yes, indeed. Uh, yes, they're not qualified to be, to be uh, sitting on the bench. And uh, we could be having two to three teams. Um, in fact, I think we're going to have uh, three teams uh, that we're going to be affected now. But I think now uh, some, some of those teams, two of those teams yeah. um, are, are making coaching changes uh, or one of them has made a coaching change and, and brought in a foreign coach and the other one, uh, Cape Town City, will also uh, be following that. Mm. And one of the reasons um, has been with the case is because um, Safa has not been complying um, with the coaching invention uh, convention that um, uh, Kev wanted them to comply with. Uh, you have neighboring countries like um, Botswana and Lesotho offering um, these Kev B and Kev A licenses. <laughs> and let me tell you, uh, in the last uh, two years, um, I think Morocco has completed uh, about uh, 345 yeah. uh, Kev B licenses and uh, also 93 uh, Kev A licenses. And these are the licenses that in South Africa we have we, not we, been we able don't to have, offer for the yeah. past five years. I think mm. the, the, the indictment, uh, you know, is pro probably falls squarely on, on, like you're saying, on South Africa, that surely there must be some change. And yes, to be honest, as, to be fair as well, like you're saying, Dr. Daniel Dunn and the executive did admit that there, there, there needs to be certain improvements. And we're not just throwing stones at them because these are the questions, like we're saying, as we see in our pictures, people are out there picketing, saying, look, they want change. And you mentioned the fact that if my final final not qualifying or playing these major competitions, it doesn't matter who else does well. You know, if Banyana Banyana are doing well, which they are, but people want to see the men's national team do well. When you ask these questions on Friday, I want us to listen quickly to this clip that we, 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 we received from yourself on Friday. And... It speaks to how Safa has not endeared themselves to the very people who are covering them uh, to tell their story. Let's listen quickly for our viewers. It's our presence. No, 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 no. 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 Switch off your mic. No, no, no. Switch off your mic. No. We decide not to ask them. No, no, no. No, no. You are not involved in football. You are a journalist. We must deal with a journalist. Not at the We decided. We do it. Yeah. Can I? Can, can I? Can I please so sit down? Uh, please, I, 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 I can't. I can't. You I can't. No. no, you can't. Uh, as a, let's bring you in there again. That was a clip that uh, we received from yourself uh, whilst attending a NSC meeting on Friday. This possibly speaks to how things are within, you know, the upper echelons of football. And could we say these, this is why we, 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 we are where we are today? You're asking the very questions that our people back home want asked. And, and let's, be, let's be fair, when journalists ask these questions, it's not because I want you to stand on the podium and sound smart. We're asking the questions because we're in touch with the people on the ground. And that's the reception that you received. Yeah, Jobe, unfortunately, uh, we spoke about this uh, on Friday while she was still fresh. And, and at that time, emotionally, I think uh, we couldn't take it. And uh, uh, even uh, with uh, the CEO yesterday, because he had started apologizing on Friday, and uh, they sent out an official apology yesterday, and uh, even in, in, in the press. And, and I told the CEO that, uh, you know, uh, it was difficult for us to accept the apology. Um, both in my capacity as um, 
a, a journalist who was on the ground on the day and in the same room and also shouting behind there and also having to plead with my colleagues to calm down so that we can take this forward later. And also as the chairperson of uh, SAFJA as well, um, to make sure that these things um, don't be don't become repeated, especially when you've got an official who had done something similar previously to mm. us and repeating it again. Uh, mm. You know, because the question was very simple from um, my colleague uh, Maskepe Matsebane from uh, Power FM to say, um, a President, at what stage um, at, or what time did you decide that you are going to need a, a third term to, com- to continue uh, with your vision? Yeah. And just when after the president had um, answered that question briefly or maybe not satisfactorily, but then the same question was uh, then fielded to other NEC members uh, who were inside the room and the, the, the way they yeah. just responded to it was just not good enough. Yeah. Know? So and, and, and I think that I was encouraged yesterday um, in, um, in, in, in a SANF AGM that we attended uh, where our SG uh, of the organization, SAFJA, Shonim uh, Tumkulu from ENCA, uh, who was also manhandled. Yeah, we're talking about. Uh, yeah, we uh, have those pictures financial. as well, indeed. Yes, 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 yeah. You know, was was manhandled um, uh, on 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 that day by one of the officials. Yeah. Um, we, kind of. Um, in fact, he also, she also asked the, the the question to the CAF president, and the CAF president says this is something that um, they they don't tolerate and. Yeah. They would like to get to the Ve- question. Ve- 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 unf- now. Ve- Ve- unfortunately, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. Uh, just a quick one on that. We asked about the third term. Uh, what should we expect? Should we expect any change? Or uh, uh, how do we hold this executive accountable going forward? Uh, quickly, if you can wrap it up for me in 30 seconds. Will they allow us to hold them accountable? And I say that because we did invite Dr. Daniel down, or we did invite, extend the invite out to, to, to Safa myself yesterday, and we were told that they'll come back to us. So uh, once again, I don't want us to sound a bit biased, but we do extend these invites to them to answer to the people. I think they do realize that um, uh, it's, it's time for uh, things to change. Um, even if they are back, uh, because if you look at the composition of the NEC, I think uh, more than 75% of those who were there before are back um, in, in this expanded uh, SAFA NEC. They do realize that it's time for things to improve mm. and change. And the bulk of it that has to happen is at Bafana Bafana level. And part of that, it also means that um, some policies um, especially at professional level. Yeah. And that is a discussion that uh, is prom- they have promised that between SAFA and the special member PSL, uh, things have to change. Yeah. And I've heard a lot about the issues of squad sizes and all these other things. But um, I-, I think we can only get to see change when it, when it happens. Yeah. William Yandu, thank you very much indeed for joining us. SABC Sports Senior Journalist, just unpacking the election that was of this uh, South African Football Association. Daniel Dunn elected once again, third term. Beza, thank you very much for speaking to us on that score.